understanding of exactly how the churches work. I mean, are these like little uh, microscopic scotch bright pads running around floating around? No, <laughs> no that's, that's, a good, that's a good question. See that little description down there, that little drawing that shows that the, the polar additives, meaning the molecule has a head and a tail, and the head will connect, wants to attach itself to the metal, okay? okay. But what's zinc? Before we talk about detergent. Okay. So zinc is a sacrificial layer that plates itself out on your camshaft and your parts. It's an anti-wear additive. So when you sometimes when we talk about zinc, just know it's an anti-wear additive. It's stopping wear. That's its whole job. It's also an antioxidant, it does other things, but that's why we put it in oil. So back in the flat tappet camshaft days, right, where you had a flat tappet cam, when the API limited the zinc. When they limited it to, you can only put so much in to protect catalytic converters, that was the reasoning behind it. All the flat tabby camshafts started failing, right and left, right? Nobody knew why. It took them a while, like at comp cams and some of the cam companies, and I've heard the stories <laughs> to figure out that they had changed the motor oil, and that's what it was, right? So people start buying zinc additives and high zinc oils and things like that to compensate it with a flat tabby cam. But what happens is that zinc wants to attach itself to that metal surface and under heat and pressure it forms up what we call phosphine glass. And then as the, let's just think of a flat tappet cam, it's the easiest way to just think about it. As it's rolling on there, you're not taking metal off, you're taking zinc off, that phosphine glass. So you change oil and you put new oil in there, new zinc, it does the same thing. So it's a sacrificial layer, okay? A detergent is something that goes in and says, all right, my job is to clean these parts to get the sludge, the varnish, and all that stuff off these parts. So the detergent and the zinc are trying to fight for the same real estate, basically. So the detergent comes in, and it's like, nope, I'm gonna coat this, so stuff can't stick to it, but then the zinc can't stick to it, right? So you have to balance it. If you get the balance good and a couple of different things, and you use a different detergent or a different this, you can make it so it all works like it should. But if you have it so it's working like you should and you drop the zinc level, now it doesn't work like it should and you lose your can. So that's where that kind of all comes from. How detergents work is exactly that. Their job is to go through, keep parts clean, they have an antioxidant quality, right, to improve, to increase, you know, kind of the life expectancy of the oil from heat but they're also the rust and corrosion protection. So if you get moisture in the engine, they're gonna be kind of covering the part, keeping the moisture from you know, starting to rust the internal of like a block, in steel. And they're also the, I always say the rollings. So as you burn, you know, as you burn fuel, one of the byproducts is acid. Those acids go down into the motor oil. When your acid level gets too high, if you ever pull a motor apart, you see like pitted bearings. You know, sometimes you'll see if you pull like an old motor part that's been sitting there with oil in it for 10 years, the bearings are pitted. That's the acid etching out the bearing surface, right? And making those pits. You know, go back to like rollies, right? It's calcium, you got heartburn, you take it, right? Because it neutralizes acid. Well, that's what it does. You know, and as you learn these things, we have a product line called our HR oils, our hot rod oils. They have a ton of detergent in them, right? Really high, like a diesel oil. Why? because that's what we recommend when people store their cars. When you got a, you know, high rider was like, guy's got a 32 Ford, he's got a small block Chevy in it. He goes and gets ice cream a couple times over the summer, goes to a couple car shows, but really for a lot, most of that car's life, it's just sitting in the garage, like all of mine. So we would recommend our high rider right? Because those are gonna protect from rust and corrosion because you're always gonna get moisture in there as the you know days change is the you know everything you get moisture from combustion so you always get moisture in an engine so our hot rod oils are really high detergent and as you start to think about why we do stuff well if we're going to make an oil we want it to be a good oil but we want it to be for the guy that stores his engine line put a ton of rust and corrosion protection in there and then we also put a standalone one in there as well but that's kind of what they do so that's what detergents do they're really there to keep it clean they're also part of a, what we call a dispersant package because you don't want to like get a bunch of sludge loose and stuff or whatever but then just have it go to the bottom of the oil pan. You want it to stay in suspension, suspension so that the filter can do its job. So that it's, that's a, they're detergent dispersant packages. So there's calcium, magnesium, and sodium. Sodium is really a bad actor with LSPI and it's not really used anymore. It's, it's magnesium and calcium, which are really what you'll see mostly. 
when you look at oils. So magnesium kind of acts like a uh, guy with a can of WD-40 spraying it down. Well, keep magnesium, it, keep yeah. it from oxidizing and we're knocking off the... Well, calcium, and they both do, but magnesium is just kind of a higher inversion of it, but what ma magnesium doesn't contribute to LSPI. So that's why if you look at a modern oil that's formulated for direct injection, it's going to be calcium and magnesium. So they use the magnesium to knock the calcium down. We knock the calcium down and we use malt. But to be honest with you, as we go forward, we have to change our, we haven't changed any of our formulations in years, but we're going to have to eventually because as the rest of the world goes into different additive chemistries and stuff, the stuff we use gets discontinued. We just had to drop two of our diesel oils because we went to blend it, no additive, right? We're going to move our products to a, right now they're calcium. You will see them become calcium and magnesium. I'm thrilled about it. I know it's a better detergent and it's gonna be great. But we also kind of have to do it because the one we use now, we've been told, look, another year or two, that stuff's, we're not gonna make it anymore because we'd be the only ones buying it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, so we've already started the process of doing that and we, our DI oils will probably be eventually calcium magnesium as well, which is, but they've been out for years now and we've done a lot of work. As a matter of fact, even Lake did some really good work on it six, eight months ago. We're both now sold. I mean, we, we don't want to be the guinea pigs, right? Let the rest of the world be the guinea pigs. Well, it's been years now and all we're seeing is the, the calcium magnesium blend is way, well, one, it prevents LSPI. Two, it's just awesome detergent. It, and it actually allows us to increase our rust and corrosion protection. So why wouldn't you? So as soon as our one that we have um, is no longer available, we're kind of ready to go, but we'll wait until. But, you know, we had a talk about this the other day. We're going to tell everybody. Guys, we're moving to a new detergent so everybody knows. Because we have so many customers that do oil analysis. All of a sudden they're going to do an oil analysis and say, hey, why is the calcium here, you know? So you have to be transparent and you just have to tell them and you have to explain why. Going back to Molly, Molly's a freak. So zinc is an anti-wear additive, a detergent, keeps things clean, keeps it dis you know, dispersed, lets the filter do its job. The last thing we always talk about is Molly. We've talked about Molly a lot just as being a, something to help with LSPI, but what Molly really is, is an extreme pressure at, well, it's a friction modifier, but where you love Molly is a lot of load, right? where you're going to get some load and you're going to be, you know, kind of up down. And the other thing is it's a friction modifier. So I always tell people always go, how does Molly work? And I'll explain it this way. My daughter got really big into the game Uno, you know, the card game. And years ago, she left a big old stack of cards on the floor. And we had those like, what were those floors called? The laminate floors or whatever. Middle of the night, I go out to get a drink of water and I stepped on them and I slipped, right? Because all those cards kind of did this laminar flow. Each one of those cards was sliding on the next one. That's what Molly does, is a molecule. It looks like a deck of cards. If you, saw, if you think about a deck of cards and you set them here and you put a big piece of metal on top of it, you could move it, right? Because the cards are going to do this. That's what Molly does. Molly's a friction modifier. It helps with wear. It kind of works with ZDP to go, all right, hey, this, let's work together. But where we've used a lot of Molly is we want to make what we call fast oil, right? We want to really get a lot of spin in there. We use Molly in all the street performance oils, which would be your LS30 and all those. Um, we use a lot of Molly. We use Molly in GP1. Where you see the most Molly out of us is our XP oils. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Also, give us a follow on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you again next time.